So if you're looking to make a website, you've probably done some searching and most people probably told you you should be using WordPress. But the truth is WordPress is pretty archaic. It's very confusing. There's a lot of plugins and it takes a lot of time to search for all the different tools you need to put it together, which ultimately gives you a really steep learning curve and just makes it a bigger barrier to make your website. And furthermore, it's gonna be even harder to make a successful website because you have all these extra steps and, and just more that can go wrong when you're using WordPress. Now that's not to say WordPress is bad, but the three tools I'm about to show you in this video in my opinion, are much better. And it's not 2015 anymore, so anybody who says that you can't rank on Google with these or otherwise they're just not as good as WordPress, like, that's just not true anymore. These are really powerful tools I'm going to show you that are incredibly user-friendly and honestly give you more flexibility than WordPress in many aspects. And we like these for beginners because, like I said, it's just so easy to learn them. The three that I have for you in this video, the three WordPress alternatives, I guarantee are, are going to be very user-friendly and, depending on what you're trying to do, really uh, sell in different categories. So the first one I'm going to talk about is kind of just a jack of all trades. The second one is great for selling things online. And the third one is really great for optimizing and making a very unique website that I'll talk about when we get there. But the first one of these three, like I said, the ability to make a website, just a jack of all trades where you don't have to get all these different plugins. You don't have to update things all the time. You don't have to do any kind of weird backend stuff. This I'm sure you've heard of is just Squarespace. Squarespace is incredibly popular and it does all the stuff I mentioned without having to go and get plugins. So for example, somebody reached out and they have like a limousine business and they want to have scheduling built into your website. If you did this with WordPress, you'd have to get WordPress, you'd have to get your hosting, you'd have to get Elementor or some website builder on top of that, and then you'd also have to get a scheduling tool. So you have all these different tools and you need to make sure they all link together, you don't want anything to break. On the flip side, Squarespace has a native scheduling service. So you can build a Squarespace website, it integrates automatically, nothing is going to break on the back end, and you don't have to worry about potentially losing out on clients that tried to schedule and it failed because your WordPress website didn't work. Squarespace does that so much more easily. And it's also very flexible when you're designing it. It's a drag and drop editor. So if I want like a photo to go on one side of my screen, I can click and drag any element. There's a grid layout. You can drop it anywhere you want. And it's going to look good both on desktop as well as on mobile. So if somebody's visiting your website on their phone, Squarespace makes it very modular and very easy for that website to look great on any device. Thirdly, it's very powerful beyond just what I said with scheduling and e-commerce and stuff like that. You can actually like host a full podcast on there. You can sell different products on there. You can have a blog on there and it doesn't have to have all of that though. So Squarespace makes it incredibly easy to start off with a very simple website. And then as you expand, just add other things onto your dashboard. It doesn't necessarily have to cost more. It doesn't necessarily have to require going out and searching for more stuff. Squarespace just has them kind of tucked away in the corner, ready for when you need them, but not in the way when you're learning. So if you want to get started with Squarespace, I have a full tutorial. I'll link that down below. I'll have actually links to tutorials on all three of these. I'm going to recommend as well as discount links to get started with them if you're looking to get started. But Squarespace, number one, super easy recommendation. And it's one that I've always personally really liked using no matter what kind of business or fundraiser or personal portfolio you're trying to do with one big exception. Now, if you're trying to sell things, it definitely works on Squarespace. But if you're trying to sell a lot of things or if you're trying to sell some more advanced things, say you're doing drop shipping, say you're selling a lot of digital products and you really want to organize things, maybe track inventory and have a lot more control on the back end, then number two on this list is going to be be substantially better. And it's not just me saying this. This is validated by some of the biggest online stores out there. If you bought anything from like Kim Kardashian or a lot of the other really big businesses out there that are selling as an individual, many of them, probably most of them, I'd argue, are using Shopify. Shopify, I'm sure you've heard of it. It's incredibly powerful because not only do they make it very easy to build your website, you could just use a template, swap out your, your text and your images, and your website's ready to go. That's probably the less important part. The more important part is the back end, which is really designed for from start to finish around e-commerce, which is going to make it easier for, like I said, tracking inventory, making some more advanced product options. So rather than just a single product, maybe you've got some different variables in your product, different t-shirt sizes, different t-shirt colors, maybe some custom text that the user can put in there, whatever it might be, Shopify has you covered on all of those. And because it is so popular as an e-commerce platform, it also has a lot of integrations and a lot of plugins that are available. So if you are going to maybe sell a little trinket, a little product, something like a phone, 
phone charger, for example. And sure, that's a great product, but if you want to market that, say on TikTok, there's actually a really easy way to integrate with TikTok and have a really solid stack for how those ads are running. So you can create an ad, run the ad, and then automatically track who clicks on that link from TikTok and what they actually do on your Shopify store. So you can go back and see, hey, this ad led people to go and add it to their cart and then they didn't buy it. But this other ad had people purchasing more. And that can give you a lot of insights into what's working best that could really optimize your store simply because Shopify makes it so easy to integrate with something like TikTok ads. And that's just one of many examples. They integrate well with MailChimp for email marketing campaigns and pretty much anything else out there. So Shopify, like I said, I have a full tutorial. I have a lot of tutorials actually on Shopify talking about how to use Shopify, how to make it in a couple minutes, how to do drop shipping, print on demand. Like there's so many things you can do with Shopify. We've got videos for all of them. I'll link a couple of them down below. And then the third option here, this one is actually my favorite. So I'm glad you guys stuck around for this one. Of all the website tools out there, this is the one that I, like if I was gonna make a personal website for myself, this is going to be the one that is just most interesting to me because you have so much more flexibility than the other ones out there. So sure, Squarespace and Wix and, and all these other tools allow you to kind of customize the website, but the last one right here allows you to add other other animations. It's an extra little touch of excitement on your website that, as you can see on these examples right here, really make it more of an appealing and interactive website. And this is called Webflow. So starting off, this can be a drag and drop editor, much like Wix and Squarespace. But if you wanted to add those little interactions, those animations, it's also very easy to do. So you can click on any item on your page, maybe an entire banner, maybe just a button, and then you can choose different triggers and you can choose what the animations are actually going to be. So a simple example would be maybe on your website, you just want like this button or this text to kind of fade in after somebody goes to your website, after it loads, or maybe as they scroll down. It's something very subtle, but it can make your website look a lot more professional and ultimately can give the user a better end experience. But in addition, you can still sell things e-commerce still works on Webflow. And if you wanted to go to the next level and actually do some coding and you actually had a little bit more technical expertise on the back end, you can still do that on Webflow. Or here's another idea. If you don't have that expertise, but maybe further on down the road, you see yourself maybe hiring somebody to come in and do that, or you know somebody who could just, you know, build a couple parts of your website, then Webflow might be a good option to get started and then eventually hire somebody to make those other intricate things. So that's why I personally like Webflow. It's really powerful, really interesting to use as well. But those are three alternatives that I like to recommend as alternatives to WordPress. Of course, WordPress is great. It's powerful. If you have it, there's a lot of benefits to it. But like I said, it's a little bit archaic, definitely a big learning curve, and it's not for everybody. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, consider subscribing and don't forget to check out the full tutorial next.